being in the army can be a dangerous job. According to some data on the matter, 82 per 1,000 service members in the U.S. Army alone have died every year on average over the past three decades. When you widen that to account for every world military over the course of human history, you get a whole lot of death. And sadly, not all of those deaths are going to be dignified, noble, or heroic. Sometimes they're just plain dumb. These are Dumb Ways to Die Army Edition. We're going to take a journey across the bizarre military deaths of history, from ancient warriors to modern day soldiers. But before we get to the sillier side of dumb deaths, let's kick off our video with some historical nightmare fuel. The death of Mithridates, a Persian soldier who died in 401 BC in the most horrifying manner imaginable for the most stupid reason imaginable. Mithridates was by all accounts a great and loyal soldier, but he had a big problem. It wasn't any lack of combat skill on his part, it was more of a lack of tact. When his king Artaxerxes II experienced a rebellion from Mithridates' rival, Cyrus the Younger, he was quick to grab his sword and charge into battle. Mithridates put down the rebellion by knocking Cyrus from his horse, at which point he was felled by a dart to the back of his knee, Skyrim style, which caused him to fall and fatally hit his head on a stone. The way Mithridates saw it, he'd been vile in ending the rebellion against Artaxerxes II, so he bragged at great length about how he put down the treacherous dog. The only problem was that that treacherous dog was Artaxerxes' brother, and their mother, Parasadis, didn't really take kindly to a lowly soldier bragging about murdering one of her royal sons. According to the writings of Plutarch, Parasadis sentenced Mithridates to death in one of the rarest and most infamously horrible methods of execution ever, scaphism, also known as the boats. Or to those more familiar with it, oh god, not that. Essentially, scaphism entails force-feeding a victim milk and honey and also smothering their body with the substances. They're then wedged between two boats, at which point they'll relieve their bowels, covering themselves in filth. That mix of diarrhea, milk, and honey attracts flies and rodents, eating away at the victim's body. But it doesn't end there. Ever so often, the executioners would crack open the boat so the doctor could attend to the victim before force-feeding him again. The intention is to keep the victim alive for as long as possible and prolong their suffering. And because Parasadis was one mean royal mother, they were able to stretch out Mithridates' torment for 17 horrible days before he died. I bet he wished he kept his mouth shut. Okay, let's do something a little less nightmarish now before we lose our lunch. While many stories from the ancient world can be questionable in their authenticity, many contend that Eleazar Evarin had a particularly weird death in the Battle of Beth Zechariah in the year 163 BC. Historical accounts tell us that Eleazar actually performed some very heroic feats in the battle, slaughtering many enemy soldiers despite his forces being vastly outnumbered. But his military career came to an end when he pierced the body of the enemy king's war elephant. The elephant died and collapsed onto poor Eleazar, squishing him flat. Rest in power, Eleazar, even if your death was a little less Lord of the Rings and a little more Tom and Jerry. Let's travel a few centuries ahead to the year 892, sticking with the theme of soldiers getting taken down by enemies they'd already killed. Few examples of this are more crazy than the weird death of legendary Viking warrior Sigurd the Mighty, the second Earl of Orkney. He had just slain his enemy Mael Brigta the Bucktoothed, who had a way less cool nickname than him. And as is in Viking tradition, he lopped off Brigta's head as a souvenir and then tied it to his horse's saddle. Once again, arrogance had proven to be his fatal flaw here. According to contemporary sources, Brigda's teeth scratched his skin as Sigrid rode, giving him a cut that would later get infected and kill him. In the end, Brigda's famous buck teeth were the deadliest weapons of all. Okay, one more ancient warrior's weird death before we move to more recent eras. Anime fans in the audience might be familiar with a certain age-old trope where characters in intense romantic situations get equally intense nosebleeds. But would you believe such a cartoonish thing took out Attila the Hun, one of history's most badass and scary military conquerors? That's right, a man so feared for his military ferocity that he had the nickname the Scourge of God passed away on his wedding night in the year 453 from a nosebleed. Exact details differ across interpretations, but it's possible that Attila died from internal bleeding caused by some unknown injury sustained in a previous battle, made worse by his habit of heavy drinking. According to one account, his men found him dead, covered in blood, with no wounds. To mourn their leader, they plucked out all their hair and mutilated each other's faces because they thought crying was too girly, and men mourn the death of their great leaders with blood. 
The Huns were really a metal bunch. Pride cometh before the fall. This is as true for soldiers as anyone else, if not more so. During the American Civil War, Union Army General John Sedgwick was walking along the front lines during the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse when he noticed his troops flinching at the cracks of enemy fire. With hubris that can only be described as tempting the gods, General Sedgwick called out, Why are you dodging like this? They couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. General Sedgwick died moments later when a Confederate sniper shot him through the face. Talk about irony. Weird deaths seem to come with the territory for Civil War generals, even if they survived the actual war. Such was the case for Confederate General William Wirt Adams, who survived the bloodiest conflict in American history, only to then bite the dust in one of the dumbest ways possible. In 1883, President Grover Cleveland appointed Adams, now in his 60s, to the role of postmaster in Jackson, Mississippi. There, he engaged in a years-long feud with John H. Martin, the 25-year-old editor of a local newspaper called The New Mississippian. Resentment between the two grew and grew until it bubbled over in 1888 with a bizarre display of public violence. The ex-general and the newspaper editor crossed paths in the street. When an altercation began, Adams yelled, you damned rascal, I have stood enough from you. The two men drew pistols and gunned each other down in the street. You can take that general out of the war, but sometimes you just can't take the war out of the general. It's a death only slightly less embarrassing than that of Union General Emerson Opdyke, who sustained a fatal injury while cleaning his revolver in 1884. For a seasoned soldier, he made the rookie error of cleaning the gun while it was loaded, causing it to accidentally discharge into his chest and fatally injure him. You'd really think a general would have better command over pretty basic gun safety procedures. As we mentioned in the start of the video, being a soldier can be an extremely dangerous profession. So much so that sometimes military personnel can die in incredibly weird, dumb ways when they are not even actively in battles. Such was the case of German General Dietrich Graf von Hutzen Heisler back in 1908 when he gave Kaiser Wilhelm II, the supreme ruler of the German Empire, a performance he was sure to never forget, and one that General Hussein Heisler sadly wouldn't survive. During a hunting trip attended by many of Germany's top military brass to celebrate the Kaiser's brilliance, Dietrich decided to take the greatest risk of his military career, performing dinner theater for his Kaiser in drag. During a formal event at Dunau Esching in Kassel, the general suddenly emerged dressed in a pink tutu and a ballerina's wreath. He would then proceed to dance his heart out in a performance that included, quote, pirouettes, jumps, capers, and flirtatious kisses to the audience. The problem was, the general may have literally danced his heart out, as after taking a bow, he promptly dropped dead in his pink tutu. This was followed by a bizarre cover-up for fears of the event being tied to the recent hardin Eulenburg affair, which related to several top members of Kaiser Wilhelm's cabinet being ousted as gay. The bizarre irony in all this? The one who'd been charged with keeping that scandal under wraps was pink tutu aficionado General Dietrich Graf von Hulsen Heiseller himself. Sometimes dumb deaths for soldiers occur during military testing. Such was the case for the triple deaths of John A. Burns, Richard Leroy McKinley, and Richard C. Legg who all met horrifying Final Destination-style demises in the middle of an experimental nuclear reactor test in Idaho in 1961. We know what you might be thinking, but radiation itself played no real part in any of these deaths. The reality was a whole lot weirder. Burns' job was to manually remove the control rod partially out of the reactor, but on the day that he removed it just a little too far, it set in motion a horrible chain reaction that resulted in the death of him and two other soldiers. That reactor core instantly went critical. It superheated the water around the core, instantly turning it into a high-pressure steam that boiled burns to death. The force of the reaction also pushed out some of the components at extreme speeds. One of these components flew into the body of Navy technician Richard C. Legg at incredible speeds, impaling him with such a force that it lifted his corpse off the catwalk and pinned it to the ceiling, where it dangled until it was later removed. During the explosion, Richard Leroy McKinley also suffered a severe head injury and passed away a day later. The bad news didn't end with the three tragic deaths of these men. The steam had irradiated their bodies to such an extent that they couldn't be sent back to their hometowns for a proper burial. Instead, they had to bury the three men in lead coffins on site. To this day, they're the only three men to have been killed by a nuclear reactor in the US. 
No list of stupid military demises would be complete without the infamous death of Colonel George Armstrong Custer. Now famous for being perhaps one of the worst military leaders of all time, he met his end during the Sioux Wars on June 25, 1876, dividing his army to lead a futile attack on a Native American group that was far larger and far more well-guarded than he came to realize. He divided his companies and led them to a surprise attack that really wasn't all that surprising using plans created for battle against far fewer combatants than they were actually facing. Clearly, there was an ill wind blowing because before Custer went to battle, one of his Native American advisors gave him the incredibly ominous message, you and I are going home today by a road we do not know. Custer's last words before going into battle were reportedly, hurrah boys, we got them. We'll finish them up and then go home to our station. But we can't know that for sure because Custer and literally every soldier he was commanding were handily slaughtered in the upcoming battle, known as the Battle of Little Bighorn. The military rarely works completely independently, it'll almost always be under the direct orders of the government, with support from that government's intelligence agencies. Occasionally bad intel can get people killed, but it gets a lot worse when such intel is willfully ignored. Such is the sad, strange, and incredibly pointless death of Private Henry Gunther, a Baltimore man serving with the U.S. Army during World War I who simply didn't know when to quit, and as such, he won the dubious honor of being possibly the last man to die during World War I. Gunther, despite being only 23, had been promoted to supply sergeant, a role he took great pride in, so much so that when he was later demoted to the rank of private, he felt the need to do anything to regain his sergeant rank. On November 11, 1918, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, as the armistice that would end the war was being signed, Private Henry Gunther, against the advice of all his superiors, made a futile charge on a German encampment. It was a grab at glory so bizarre and foolish that even the German troops he was running toward tried desperately to convince him to stop and stand down. He didn't, so the troops he ran towards were forced to gun him down in self-defense. Let's go into the future a bit to World War II, a conflict that occupies more space in the public consciousness than any other historical war. And given that it was responsible for, by some counts, around 15 million deaths of military personnel, it should not surprise anyone that some of those deaths were weird and dumb. This one, however, is something special. Lieutenant Jack Conger, a fighter pilot during the Guadalcanal campaign of the war in the Pacific, thought his goose was cooked when his F-4F Wildcat got a deadly Japanese Mitsubishi AM-6 Zero on his tail. Zeros were some of the best fighter planes in the world at the time, and Japanese pilots were famed for having some of the greatest aerial skills in the world. As the Zero easily swooped around him, outclassing him at every turn, Conger truly felt he wouldn't be returning home that day. But he had one thing on his side, the arrogance of his enemy. When the Zero was right behind him in a perfect position to fire a kill shot and turn Lieutenant Conger into another statistic, he started doing aerial tricks. According to Conger, this was a surprisingly common thing among a lot of the Japanese fighter pilots. They'd been told again and again that they were the world's best pilots, so they often had the confidence to do a bit of showboating. The Zero truly became a Zero when rather than shooting down Conger's plane, he flew in front of him instead just to show off. Seizing his chance, Conger opened up fire, killing the cocky pilot and saving his own life. You really can't make this stuff up. Now watch Dumb Ways to Die USA Edition, or check out this video instead.